During dental treatment, small objects such as pieces of restoration or debris may drop into the oropharynx of the patient. These objects, referred as foreign bodies, may get swallowed or aspirated. In case of swallowing, 90% of the swallowed objects successfully cross the esophagus and pass through the stomach and intestine completely without causing any complications. However, in case of aspiration, the object can enter the trachea where it leads to foreign body airway obstruction or the object can pass on to the bronchus resulting in infection, lung abscess or atelectasis. Hello everyone, welcome to the series on medical emergencies in dental practice. Today I will be discussing about foreign body airway obstruction. Foreign body airway obstruction can be divided into two categories, complete airway obstruction and partial airway obstruction. Partial obstruction can further be subdivided as partial obstruction with good air exchange and partial obstruction with poor air exchange. So let us first look into partial airway obstruction. When there is a good exchange of air, the patient is able to breathe, speak and cough effectively while wheezing between the cuffs. On the other hand, patients with poor air exchange present with weak ineffectual cough or no cough, growing sound during inspiration, markedly prolonged inspiratory phase, inability to breathe or speak and sinusis, lethargy and disorientation. Coming to complete airway obstruction, it can be divided into three phases. In the initial phase that lasts for around three minutes, the patient is conscious but in distress. He or she is unable to make sounds or breathe. There is marked increase in sympathetic outflow leading to increase in blood pressure, heart rate and respiratory rate. Exaggerated respiratory movements without air exchange, decreased arterial oxygen tension, increase in arterial carbon dioxide tension and a fall in pH, retraction of supraclavicular and intercostal muscles and sinusis. In the second phase, patient loses consciousness with a drop in blood pressure and heart rate. There is decrease in respiratory efforts and further deterioration in blood gases. The third phase starts after 4 to 5 minutes wherein vital signs such as blood pressure and pulse disappear. ECG degenerates from sinus to nodal bradycardia then to idioventricular rhythms and finally terminates in ventricular fibrillation or asystole and full cardiorespiratory arrest. Now coming to the management part. In adults and children above one year, terminate all dental procedures, ask the patient to try to cuff the object out, identify complete airway obstruction by the universal sign of choking that is patient clutching at neck, ask questions like are you choking and can I help you, apply abdominal thrust that is Hemlich's maneuver until the foreign body is expelled or the patient becomes unconscious. If the foreign body is expelled, administer oxygen, monitor vital signs and shift the patient to an emergency care facility. However, if the patient becomes unconscious, place the patient on the ground in supine position with head in neutral position. Call for help and activate emergency medical services. Start basic life support with 30 chest compressions and during each ventilation open the mouth wide and look for the foreign object. If visible, remove the object with fingers, Magill intubation forcep or other device. If not visible, continue with the chest compression and look into the mouth prior to each ventilation. Continue until effective or medical services arrive to take over the management. If unable to ventilate after three attempts, laryngoscopy or cricothyrotomy is recommended. However, it should be done by trained professionals. Now in case of children under one year, a combination of back slaps and chest thrust is required. First kneel or sit with the infant placed on the lap and remove clothing from the infant's chest. Hold the infant with face down and head slightly lower than the chest resting on the forearm. The infant's head and jaw should be supported by the arm and any compressing of the soft tissues of the infant's throat should be avoided. Deliver up to 5 back slaps forcefully between the infant's shoulder blade using the heel of your hand. Each back slap should be forceful enough to dislodge the foreign object. Following 5 back slaps, 
place the free hand on the infant's back supporting back of the infant's head with the palm the infant is protectively cradled between the forearms with one palm supporting the back of the infant's head while the other palm supporting the head and jaw the infant is turned as a unit into a head facing up position with your forearm resting on your thigh the infant's head should be kept lower than the trunk now deliver up to 5 quick downward chest thrust in the middle of the chest over the lower half of the infant's sternum this is the same hand placement as for infant chest compression during cpr chest thrust are delivered at a rate of 1 per second with each one strong enough to dislodge the foreign body the sequence of five back slaps and five chest thrust is repeated until the foreign body is removed or the infant loses consciousness now in an unconscious infant back slaps are stopped and bls commenced with chest compressions call for help and activate medical emergency services immediately place the infant on a firm flat surface and begin chest compression at the completion of 30 compressions inspect infant's mouth for the foreign body if visible remove the object using fingers or magill intubation forcep continue bls for 2 minutes or 5 cycles and monitor vital signs and shift to an emergency care facility at last some important points to note most airway obstruction occur during inspiration hence the lungs are inflated and filled with oxygen that keeps the victim conscious for a longer time blind finger sweeps should not be performed as they may force the foreign body further back into the airway abdominal thrust are not recommended in infants under 1 year as it may cause injury or organ damage such as to the liver or spleen the indications for chest thrust include infants less than 1 year of age pregnant patient where chest thrust is less likely to cause regurgitation and obese patients if the rescuer is unable to encircle the patient's abdomen that was all about foreign body airway obstruction however it is recommended to refer updated and standard guidelines regularly to keep yourself up to date with the emergency protocols in the upcoming video i will take on another medical emergency and its management till then if you found the video helpful and informative then do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more content also you can download our app for more details and notes on dental and medical topics